In the year 1972, a novel named The Eiger Sanction was published, featuring a protagonist who was both a history professor and a mountain climber, as well as a former assassin for the U.S. Secret Service. Three years later, in 1975, this novel was adapted into a film of the same name, starring Clint Eastwood in the lead role. Despite a tragic accident during filming that resulted in the loss of a crew member's life, Eastwood chose to continue shooting the movie. In November 1972, Universal Studios secured the film rights for the Iger Sanction, shortly after the novel's release. This acquisition allowed Universal Studios to adapt the novel into a movie, which was eventually released in 1975. The novel, written by Trevanian, gained significant popularity, and the film rights were highly sought after. Universal Studios' acquisition of these rights demonstrated their interest in creating a cinematic experience based on the novel's thrilling storyline and engaging characters. The acquisition of film rights is a crucial step in the filmmaking process, and Universal Studios' early acquisition of the Iger Sanction ensured that they could begin production in a timely manner. Hal Dresner was chosen to adapt the screenplay for the Iger Sanction movie. However, the studio found two of his drafts too violent and rejected them. Dresner was tasked with creating a screenplay based on the novel of the same name, written by Trevanian. The novel told the story of a retired assassin, an art history professor, Jonathan Hemlock, who is coerced into taking on one last assignment to locate and kill a double agent among a group of mountain climbers planning to scale the treacherous north face of the Eiger. Dresner's initial drafts were reportedly faithful to the source material, capturing the novel's blend of action, intrigue, and wry humor. However, the studio executives felt that the violence depicted in the drafts was excessive and did not align with their vision for the film. As a result, Dressner's drafts were rejected, and the studio brought in other writers to work on the project. Despite the challenges in adapting the novel, The Iger Sanction ultimately became a successful film, thanks in large part to the direction of Clint Eastwood, who also starred as Jonathan Hemlock. The final screenplay, while different from Dressner's drafts, still retained much of the novel's spirit and tension, delivering a thrilling and entertaining movie experience. In 1973, producers Richard Zanuck and David Brown were sought after to collaborate on a spy thriller film project. Their involvement in the production eventually led to the enlistment of acclaimed actor Clint Eastwood, who was initially hesitant to participate in the genre. Nevertheless, Eastwood agreed to take on the lead role in the film, titled The Iger Sanction. The movie is centered around Jonathan Hemlock, a retired assassin, an art professor who is coerced into undertaking one final mission. Hemlock must locate and eliminate an enemy spy who is among a group of mountain climbers attempting to scale the treacherous north face of the Eiger Mountain in the Swiss Alps. In addition to producing the film, Zanuck and Brown also served as executive producers, overseeing the project's development and ensuring its successful completion. Meanwhile, Eastwood not only starred in the film, but also took on the roles of director and executive producer. The Iger Sanction is a thrilling adventure that combines elements of action, suspense, and mystery. The film's stunning visuals and breathtaking mountain climbing sequences were made possible through the use of cutting-edge filmmaking techniques and equipment. In summary, the involvement of producers Richard Zanuck and David Brown in the Iger Sanction was instrumental in bringing the film to fruition, as well as securing the participation of Clint Eastwood as the lead actor and director. The resulting movie is a gripping tale of adventure an intrigue that showcases the stunning beauty of the Swiss Alps and the challenges of mountain climbing. Clint Eastwood, already an established star, was looking for a way to fulfill his contractual obligations with Universal Studios. He found the opportunity in the form of the Iger Sanction, a film that would allow him to work in isolation in the beautiful Swiss Alps. The film, released in 1975, was an action thriller directed by Eastwood himself. He played the lead role of Jonathan Hemlock, a retired assassin and art professor who is coerced into taking on one last job to locate and eliminate a double agent on a dangerous climbing expedition in the Swiss Alps. Eastwood was drawn to the project, not only for the chance to close his contract with Universal, but also for the opportunity to indulge in his passion for mountain climbing. The film's setting in the Swiss Alps provided the perfect backdrop for the dangerous climbing sequences and allowed Eastwood to work in the solitude he desired. The production of the film was not without its challenges, as the cast and crew had to contend with harsh weather conditions and the inherent dangers of mountain climbing. However, Eastwood's experience as a climber 
and his determination to see the project through helped to ensure its success. The Iger sanction was a commercial success and further solidified Eastwood's reputation as a versatile and accomplished actor and director. His motivation for taking on the project may have been primarily contractual and personal, but the film's enduring legacy is a testament to his enduring impact on the world of cinema. Warren Murphy, a successful novelist, was approached by Clint Eastwood to revise the script for The Iger Sanction. Despite Murphy's limited experience in screenwriting and his dislike for the novel's tone, he agreed to the task. Eastwood, who was both starring in and directing the film, wanted to ensure the script was perfect for the big screen. He had admired Murphy's work and believed he was the right person to bring a fresh perspective to the story. Murphy faced the challenge head-on and worked diligently to transform the original script into a thrilling and engaging movie. His ability to adapt and learn the nuances of screenwriting proved invaluable to the project's success. Throughout the revision process, Murphy stayed true to the film's core themes and action-packed premise while also infusing his own unique style and wit into the dialogue. His contributions helped elevate the film and make it the classic that it is today. In the end, the Iger sanction was a financial and critical success, thanks in large part to Warren Murphy's skillful script revisions. His work on the film remains a testament to his talent and versatility as a writer. Clint Eastwood, the director and star of the 1975 film The Iger Sanction, was determined to make the climbing sequences authentic and realistic. He believed that the authenticity of these scenes would make up for any weaknesses in the narrative. To achieve this, Eastwood and his crew undertook extensive preparations and training for the climbing scenes. The film's climbing sequences were shot on location in the Swiss Alps, on the actual Iger Mountain. This added to the authenticity of the scenes, as the crew had to deal with the real challenges and dangers of mountain climbing. Eastwood himself received training in climbing and even performed some of the stunts in the film. In addition to the location shooting and Eastwood's personal involvement, the crew also consulted with experts in mountain climbing to ensure the accuracy of the climbing sequences. This attention to detail and commitment to authenticity helped to make the climbing scenes in the Iger Sanction more believable and engaging for audiences. Overall, Eastwood's focus on authenticity in the climbing scenes was a way to compensate for any shortcomings in the narrative. By making these scenes as realistic as possible, he was able to create a more immersive and thrilling experience for viewers. In the 1975 film The Iger Sanction, director and star Clint Eastwood showcased innovative filming techniques to capture the authenticity of mountain climbing scenes. Eastwood and his team developed lightweight batteries for specialty cameras, enabling them to film on the treacherous slopes of the Iger Mountain in the Swiss Alps. This breakthrough allowed for the filming of complex and dangerous stunts, showcasing the true challenges of mountain climbing. These techniques created a more immersive and thrilling experience for the audience, highlighting the beauty and danger of the mountains. Through these innovative methods, Eastwood and his team brought a new level of realism to the big screen. Mike Hoover, a skilled documentary filmmaker, played a crucial role in the 1975 movie The Iger Sanction. His expertise in mountaineering made him an invaluable asset to the production, particularly in filming the climbing sequences. Hoover served as both an advisor and the principal cameraman for these scenes. His contributions were essential in ensuring the authenticity of the climbing scenes, as he was able to provide insight into the techniques and challenges faced by mountaineers. Hoover's expertise allowed the film to accurately portray the dangers and difficulties of climbing, lending an air of realism to the movie. As the principal cameraman for the climbing sequences, Hoover's role was twofold. Not only did he need to capture the action on film, but he also had to do so in a way that was both safe and practical for the climbers involved. Hoover's experience as a filmmaker and a mountaineer made him uniquely suited to this task. Overall, Mike Hoover's role in the Iger Sanction was instrumental in bringing the climbing sequences to life. His expertise in mountaineering and filmmaking allowed him to serve as both an advisor and a cameraman, ensuring the authenticity and safety of the climbing scenes in the movie. Clint Eastwood, known for his acting and directing skills, also performed most of his own stunts in the 1975 movie The Iger Sanction. One of the most dangerous scenes in the movie involved Eastwood's character cutting his safety line over a significant drop. In this scene, Eastwood's character, Jonathan Hemlock, is scaling the north face of the Iger Mountain in the Swiss Alps. Hemlock is on a mission to find and eliminate a double agent 
But things take a dangerous turn when he realizes that his safety line has been cut. Despite the risk, Eastwood insisted on performing the stunt himself. He was harnessed to the mountain and had a backup safety line, but the stunt still required a great deal of skill and bravery. The scene was filmed in a single take, with Eastwood hanging in mid-air for several seconds before pulling himself back up to the mountain. Eastwood's commitment to performing his own stunts added a level of authenticity to the scene that would have been difficult to achieve with a stunt double. It also demonstrated his physical prowess and willingness to take risks for his art. Overall, Eastwood's stunt work in the Iger Sanction is just one example of his dedication to his craft. Whether he's acting, directing, or performing stunts, Eastwood consistently delivers high-quality performances that have earned him a place as one of Hollywood's most respected and enduring stars. Clint Eastwood and George Kennedy, the stars of the 1975 film The Iger Sanction, underwent rigorous preparation and training for the movie's challenging climbing scenes. The two actors trained in Yosemite National Park, one of the most famous climbing destinations in the world, to get in shape and learn the necessary climbing skills. One of the key training locations for Eastwood and Kennedy was the Lost Aerospire, a tall and slender rock formation that is notorious for its technical climbing difficulties. The actors spent many hours climbing and repelling from the spire, working to build their strength, endurance, and confidence in their climbing abilities. The training was essential, as the Iger Sanction features several intense and thrilling climbing scenes set on the Iger Mountain in the Swiss Alps. The film's plot revolves around a retired assassin, played by Eastwood, who is coaxed out of retirement to carry out one final assignment to climb the Iger and assassinate a target. Through their training in Yosemite, Eastwood and Kennedy were able to convincingly portray the physical and mental challenges of climbing such a formidable mountain. The preparation and attention to detail paid off, as the Iger Sanction was a box office success and is still considered a classic of the adventure genre. In summary, the preparation and training for the Iger Sanction was a crucial part of the film's production. Eastwood and Kennedy's rigorous training in Yosemite National Park helped them to convincingly portray the challenges of climbing the Iger and contributed to the film's success. Clint Eastwood, already an established actor and producer, took on the additional role of director for the 1975 film The Iger Sanction. The original director chosen for the project was Don Siegel, who had collaborated with Eastwood on several successful films. However, Eastwood decided against having Siegel direct the Iger Sanction due to the film's demanding action and stunt scenes. Eastwood's decision to direct the film himself was influenced by his desire to ensure that the film's challenging action sequences were executed with precision and authenticity. As a seasoned actor and filmmaker, Eastwood had developed a keen eye for detail and a deep understanding of the technical aspects of filmmaking, making him well suited to take on the role of director. In the Iger Sanction, Eastwood plays the character of Jonathan Hemlock, a retired assassin and art professor who is coerced into taking on one last mission. The mission requires Hemlock to climb the treacherous north face of the Iger Mountain in the Swiss Alps and assassinate a target. The film's action and stunt scenes were a significant challenge for Eastwood, who had to balance his directorial responsibilities with the demands of performing death-defying stunts. Despite these challenges, Eastwood was able to deliver a thrilling and engaging film that showcases his versatility as a filmmaker and his prowess as an action star. The Iger Sanctions production was not without its challenges, as filming on the mountain's north face posed numerous logistical and safety issues. However, Eastwood was able to navigate these challenges and deliver a film that has stood the test of time and remains a classic in the action thriller genre. In conclusion, Clint Eastwood's decision to take over as director for the Iger Sanction was a pivotal moment in the film's production. Eastwood's experience and expertise allowed him to bring the film's challenging action and stunt scenes to life, resulting in a thrilling and engaging cinematic experience. The filming location for the Iger Sanction included the last legal climb of the Totem Pole in Monument Valley, Arizona. This iconic rock formation, standing at 1,000 feet tall, was a challenging climb, but the production team was determined to include it in the film. Before the film shoot, the totem pole had previous climbers' equipment left behind. As part of the agreement to climb it, the production team was required to remove all of the existing equipment. This task added an extra element of difficulty to the filming, but it was completed successfully. The climb of the totem pole was a significant aspect of the film, and its inclusion in the production made for some breathtaking scenes. The location, stunning scenery, 
and the challenge of climbing the totem pole added to the overall excitement and adventure of the movie. In addition to the totem pole, other scenes in the Eiger Sanction were filmed in various locations, including the Swiss Alps. The film's production required a diverse range of settings, from the desert landscapes of Arizona to the snowy peaks of the Alps. Overall, the filming locations for the Eiger Sanction were carefully chosen to enhance the movie's storyline and provide a visually stunning experience for viewers. The climb of the totem pole in Monument Valley, Arizona was a memorable part of the film and its inclusion added to the movie's sense of adventure and excitement. The 1975 movie The Eiger Sanction features a talented cast, including George Kennedy and Jack Cassidy in supporting roles. George Kennedy plays the character of Jonathan Hemlock, an art dealer and former assassin who is also a skilled mountain climber. Kennedy's character is Eastwood's character's friend and former climbing partner, and his portrayal adds depth and camaraderie to the film. Jack Cassidy plays the character of Miles Meloff, a wealthy and mysterious man who hires Hemlock for a dangerous climbing expedition in the Swiss Alps. Cassidy's performance brings a sense of intrigue and tension to the character, keeping the audience on the edge of their seats. Together, Kennedy and Cassidy's performances add to the thrilling and action-packed storyline of the Eiger Sanction, making it a classic film that continues to be enjoyed by audiences today. Their casting in these supporting roles was a crucial part of the film's success, providing strong support for the lead actor and contributing to the overall enjoyment of the movie. The filming of the Eiger Sanction began in Switzerland in August 1974. The production team faced a significant challenge due to the notorious difficulty of the Eiger's north face. To overcome this, they assembled a team of climbing experts from various countries. This international group of experts was crucial in ensuring the safety and authenticity of the climbing scenes in the movie. The Eiger's north face is known for its treacherous terrain and unpredictable weather conditions, making it one of the most dangerous mountains to climb in the world. The film's production team had to take extra precautions to ensure the safety of the cast and crew members during the shoot. The climbing experts played a vital role in this regard, providing their expertise and guidance throughout the filming process. The use of real climbing experts added a level of realism and authenticity to the movie that would have been difficult to achieve with stuntmen or actors who were not experienced climbers. The team's knowledge of the Eiger and its climbing routes helped the production team plan and execute the climbing scenes with precision and accuracy. In addition to the climbing experts, the film's production team also had to deal with the unpredictable weather conditions in the Swiss Alps. They had to be prepared for sudden changes in weather and had to adjust their filming schedule accordingly. Despite these challenges, the team was able to capture some stunning footage of the Eiger and its surrounding landscape. Overall, the principal photography of the Eiger Sanction was a challenging yet rewarding experience for the production team. The use of real climbing experts and their expertise in climbing the Eiger's north face added a level of authenticity to the movie that made it stand out from other action thrillers of the time. The stunning footage of the Swiss Alps and the Eiger's north face further added to the movie's appeal, making it a visual treat for audiences. In the 1975 film, The Eiger Sanction, a tragic accident occurred during its production. A rock slide in the Swiss Alps killed British climber David Knowles and injured American climber Mike Hoover. This incident caused the film's lead actor and director Clint Eastwood to contemplate halting the entire production. The accident brought a somber mood to the set and served as a stark reminder of the inherent dangers of filming in such a challenging and unpredictable environment. The loss of Knowles was deeply felt by the cast and crew, and the incident left an indelible mark on the movie's production history. After much persuasion from the climbing team, Eastwood decided to continue filming the Eiger Sanction in 1975. This choice honored the risks understood by the crew and climbers involved in the production. Despite the dangers, the team was committed to bringing the film to life, showcasing the thrill and challenge of mountain climbing. Eastwood's decision to continue demonstrated his respect for the team's dedication and willingness to face potential peril in the name of filmmaking. The production moved forward with a renewed sense of purpose, capturing the breathtaking beauty and treacherous conditions of the Eiger Mountain. During the filming of the Eiger Sanction in 1975, several accidents occurred, underlining the hazards of the production. The movie, directed by and starring Clint Eastwood, featured dangerous mountain climbing scenes on the Eiger Mountain and the Swiss Alps. 
One accident involved a stuntman who was severely injured while performing a climbing stunt. The stuntman fell and tumbled down the mountain, resulting in broken bones and other injuries. The production had to halt temporarily to attend to the stuntman's medical needs and ensure the safety of the cast and crew. Another accident occurred when a camera operator lost his footing while trying to capture a climbing scene. The camera operator fell and rolled down the mountain causing damage to the camera equipment and narrowly avoiding serious injury. The harsh weather conditions on the Eiger Mountain also posed significant challenges to the production. The filming had to be postponed several times due to heavy snowfall and icy conditions making it difficult and dangerous for the cast and crew to work. These accidents and challenges highlighted the dangers of filming on location and the importance of safety measures during production. Despite the accidents, the Eiger Sanction was completed and released in 1975, showcasing the breathtaking views and thrilling climbing scenes of the Eiger Mountain. After filming in picturesque locations such as Switzerland and the American Southwest, the production of the Eiger Sanction came to a close in late September 1974. To celebrate the successful completion of principal photography, actor and director Clint Eastwood hosted a wrap party at his restaurant. This gathering was an opportunity for the cast and crew to come together and reflect on the challenging yet rewarding experience of making the film. The production of the Eiger Sanction required a great deal of planning and coordination as the film featured complex mountain climbing scenes that were shot on location in the Swiss Alps. The crew had to ensure the safety of the actors while also capturing the breathtaking beauty of the mountainous landscape. In addition to the stunning visuals, the Eiger Sanction also featured a thrilling storyline and compelling characters. Eastwood played the lead role of Dr. Jonathan Hemlock, a retired assassin, an art dealer who is coerced into taking on one final mission. The film was a departure from Eastwood's usual Western roles, showcasing his versatility as an actor and director. Following the wrap party, the film underwent the post-production process, which included editing, sound mixing, and visual effects. This stage of production is crucial in bringing the film to life and ensuring that the final product is cohesive and engaging. Overall, the production of the Eiger Sanction was a significant undertaking that required the collaboration of many talented individuals. From the stunning location shoots to the thrilling storyline, the film is a testament to the hard work and dedication of all involved. The 1975 film The Eiger Sanction, directed by and starring Clint Eastwood, received mixed reviews from critics. The film's storyline and screenplay were the main targets of criticism. Some reviewers found the plot confusing and the dialogue weak, which detracted from their overall enjoyment of the movie. However, The Eiger Sanction was praised for its impressive climbing footage and action sequences. The film is set in the Swiss Alps, and the cinematography captures the breathtaking beauty and danger of the mountainous terrain. Eastwood's character, a retired assassin and mountain climber, is tasked with scaling the treacherous north face of the Eiger Mountain to complete a mission. The climbing scenes are expertly filmed and provide a thrilling visual experience. The film's action sequences were also highly regarded. Eastwood's character is a skilled fighter and the fight scenes are expertly choreographed and executed. The film's pacing is well balanced with a good mix of action, drama, and suspense. Overall, the Eiger Sanction is a mixed bag. While the storyline and screenplay left something to be desired, the film's impressive climbing footage and action sequences make it a worthwhile watch for adventure movie fans.